Hi, my name is Amelia. Today I'm traveling from Hamilton Island to Sydney. It's my last stop, so come with me. Sydney now. My Australian accent got a lot worse. This is where the south to get. I took the train from the airport all the way to the city centre. It's super cheap and it only took around 15 minutes and I was absolutely amazed by the seats. I don't understand why we don't have this in London. Look at this giant Christmas tree. It just looks so beautiful. It's still really weird celebrating Christmas in a hot country, but I think I've kind of gotten used to it. I checked into the Fullerton Hotel and honestly, it was just way better than expected. It was just so comfortable and it's definitely my favorite hotel of the entire trip. It definitely beats cockroaches in the Gold Coast. Good morning, everyone. Today I'll be heading to the Blue Mountains in Sydney and I'm gonna get there by train. Getting to the Blue Mountains is really easy. However, I would advise you get there early just because I got on the train 10 minutes before departure and the seats were almost all gone. I feel sorry for those getting on further down the line as I don't even know if people would have been able to make it on the train. We've arrived in Katumba. For the amount of people coming and arriving to Katumba every day, I thought the town and area would be a little bit more built up because at the moment I don't think it can quite deal with the amount of visitors and tourists. The infrastructure just isn't that. I didn't really like the town of Katumba very much. I'm not really sure why, but I found it had this very strange vibe. When I finally saw the Blue Mountains, I was so shocked by how busy it was. I mean, I expected it to be busy, but not this busy. The Blue Mountains, however, are spectacular and honestly my favorite thing to do in Sydney. I wish I'd gotten to see it on a clear day as I think it would have made it even more beautiful, but I haven't been very lucky with the weather on this trip and I hope that one day I can come back and see it in all its glory. There are a lot of walking trails and I tried to do some of them, but it was almost impossible with the amount of people there. And I know I'm being hypocritical because I'm a tourist complaining about other tourists, but I just want to be honest in this video. Perhaps if you go an off-peak season, you'll have a better experience. There's also something called Scenic World nearby, where they have a cable car and a railway through the Blue Mountains. Honestly, my brain couldn't comprehend it at the time, so I gave it a miss, and I don't really feel like I missed out at all. I also made it to Katoomba Cascades, which is beautiful, but then it started to rain, so it's time to head back. I would have liked to have stayed for a little longer, but I just found the crowds a little bit too overwhelming. So Katoomba is so, so busy, especially the station. We didn't think we'd be able to get back on the train. So we took an Uber back one stop to Medlo Bar, and we were like, okay, we'll get on the train there. It won't be so busy. However, it was so, it took so long for an Uber to come by the time he came and picked us up and dropped us, we missed our train. So now we have to wait one hour until the next one. Um, which is a bit annoying, but you know, at least we get to explore this place. I have no idea what it is. I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. Because I missed the train, the journey back to Sydney ended up taking a lot longer than planned. The train is the best way I think to get there. However, if you drive, it is a bit more convenient, but I don't think you'd find a parking just because of how busy it is. When we arrived back at the hotel, I actually found the secret underground supermarket and I was so happy because they had these little tiny mini shopping trolleys. Today is our walking tour day of Sydney, so we're just going to have a look around, see the Opera House hopefully, and the first stop is we are going to go and get some breakfast from a place called Sticky Fingers.
breakfast is so bad, I actually agree with my mood. Get really like it. After a very unsatisfactory breakfast, it was time to head to Circular Quay to go and check out Sydney Opera House. Circular Quay is full of shops and restaurants and little cafes and it is super busy because it's the number one place where all the tourists go. A lot of people told me not to get my hopes up when you see the Sydney Opera House. But honestly, it actually exceeded my expectations. I couldn't stop staring at it. Honestly, I think it's an amazing building and I was really impressed with the architecture. It kind of looks to me like a giant flower. And it was the first time it really hit me how far away in the world I was from home. There's also like a little small place next to the opera house that serves drinks and snacks. I didn't actually eat there so I can't comment, but I've heard the food there is supposed to be pretty good. Next door to Sydney Opera House is the Botanic Gardens and this opened in 1816. The gardens are huge and so peaceful and there's also a lot of shade from the trees which is good because it was super sunny. This garden is also Australia's oldest botanic garden. You could easily spend all day here. I just did a quick walk through, took around 20 minutes and then I managed to see some trees, some flowers and some statues. I feel so blessed to have seen the Opera House. It's been on my list for so long and I feel like I've achieved something by just being able to see it. It's one thing I can tick off my bucket list. Honestly, I have just had the worst luck with weather on this trip. This time I'm at Bondi Beach and I'm at the Iceberg Swimming Club. I wanted to see that really famous kind of view where you have the really light blue pool and then the light blue sea in the background. But I guess the weather was just not on my side, but it's fine. At least I know what it's supposed to look like. It's a little walk through Bondi to Bondi Icebergs. The actual place is, I think it's kind of like, well, it looks a little run down. It's also extremely busy. I'm now doing the coastal walk from Bondi to Coogee, and actually, it's a really beautiful walk. It's a shame that it is a little bit cloudy today, but you know. It's probably better to hearing the walk in the cloud than it, than it would be in the sun. I don't think Bondi is quite my vibe or quite my place, but I'm glad I got to see it. So yeah. The Bondi to Kuji walk is a six kilometer walk and it's one of Sydney's most famous. It takes you past some beautiful beaches, cliff tops, and you can also make stops along the way. It's just a nice walk to do because you can do it at your own pace. It probably takes around two to three hours to complete. I didn't do the entire walk, but I really enjoyed the portion that I did. Bondi in general though, I know just wasn't for me and I don't want to offend anyone, but I just found it a little run down and I think if I was younger, I probably would have enjoyed it more, but I know now, I just, yeah, it's not my vibe. I grabbed a quick taxi back to the city centre and then it was time to head out again. So walking to Observatory Hill at the moment because we, we were supposed to do a sunset kayak and see Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House but they cancelled on us because of the wind. So we're heading to Observatory Hill and we're going to see if we can see sunset there. It's a little bit cloudy so I'm not so sure. come and watch sunset but the only thing about this point is sunset is actually behind me so most people just come to observatory hill to look at the city lights I think if you actually want to see sunset and you want to see the harbour bridge and the opera house and probably go elsewhere so tomorrow night I'll try and see if I can do sunset from a different location because sunset is behind me right now but the view is still really nice It's our last full day in Sydney today and we're going to go take the ferry to Manly and just check it out. 
So there's two ferries that you can take to Manly. One takes around 30 minutes and the other takes around 15 minutes. So we were queuing for the ferry for Manly and it was a huge queue with loads and loads of tourists. And then right next to the queue, we noticed there was another sign at the top that said Manly Fast Ferry, and there's barely anyone in it. So we just ran into that line and got straight onto a ferry. I think the normal ferry is about 30 minutes, whereas this one's about 17, 20 minutes. It's so it's well worth reading the signs and just looking at the queues. seriously cute. That's kind of the only way I can think of describing it. It reminds me of my seaside hometown back in the UK. And also look at this shot, it makes me laugh. I feel like a giant. Again, the weather was cloudy, but I didn't really mind. I just like watching the surfers, time goes so fast. We grabbed the ferry back and then it was time to visit somewhere very special. It was time to go to the Australian Museum to see, you guessed it, dinosaurs! I'm just kidding, I didn't actually come for the dinosaurs. Although I have just realised, in every single city I've been to in Australia, I've now been to a museum to see dinosaurs. Right guys, I found a Dilophosaurus! This is Robert Pattinson's favourite dinosaur! <laughs> the real reason I went to the museum was actually to see the Ramesses II exhibition. It's the first time the sarcophagus had left Egypt and I felt like that's such a big thing, I have to go and see it. I only spent a few days in Sydney but I felt like I did a lot with the time that I had. I had an early flight in the morning so it was time just to do a little bit of shopping, grab some food and pray that I could close my suitcase with all the Tim Tams that I'd stuffed in there. We're only at Sydney Airport and we are flying home today and I am so sad. I have had the best time on this trip. Australia isn't at all what I thought it was going to be. The cities in Australia remind me so much of the UK to the point that I often felt like I was in England if it weren't for the weather. But for me, I think Australia's charm lies in its smaller towns. One place that sticks out is Byron Bay and it's somewhere that I want to return to again later this year. I also have a burning desire to venture into the more remote parts of Australia and possibly the outback. I think there is so much beauty that tourists and visitors miss by only visiting the East Coast. And I have a curiosity about the West Coast that I can't control. So make sure you subscribe as I will be heading to Perth and Exmouth in the next couple of months. And as always, I want to take you with me.